lot of content locally. Um, what film and crew specializations are you seeing? What what things? What are you looking for to hide, you know, in, in, a, in a potential crew, or what can people do to be part of the work you're doing? Okay. We're looking for people who know what they're doing. Is the first thing I can tell you. Um, when we set out, we'll do a small crew that's doing an interview, and that's usually just a producer and a camera person, and the producer second is on the pregnant. We're just, everybody tries to save money that way. But we have people go out sometimes and can't focus the camera, can't zoom, can't hold it straight and level, and they've got degrees. So I'm telling you guys, you need to be an intern somewhere, local station, production house, movie set, whatever, is the greatest education you will ever get. And there are people in this town, I'll tell you, who are retired filmmakers, all sorts of different stages that we know about, we need, who are willing to work and teach what they know because they want to pass it on and play it on the crook, is what they tell us. So, um, things that, um, that, I didn't want to jump in, but, you have another question? <laughs> yeah, I do have a follow up question for you. Before I ask that, I'd like to remind everyone that there are students to assist with collecting your index cards of questions, and we are really excited to hear your questions. So please pass them forward so we can make sure we um, answer the things you would like to know about. Back to the smaller mm -hmm. students, can you tell us what you think makes a great intern, a great starting out worker for you? Uh, actually, the, the same thing. We we um, we did some productions that asked for interns, uh, not too many, um, but uh, when we do, it's the same thing. We want to make sure that uh, professionalism uh, is of the highest standard, and that the stay in your lane is the best way to put it. Um, just knowing what the what the hierarchy is and making sure that you stay within that. Uh, but we've had great interns on every production um, that's come in. Um, there was a, a, sh a, a very low budget Western that shot here called Tombstone Rashomon. Some of you probably worked on it. It was directed by Alex Cox, who made uh, Sid and Nancy, uh, Repo Man, and a number of other films you've probably seen. And um, basically his, his entire crew and a lot of his actors were interns. Um, the, it was a pretty micro budget thing. Uh, he was so happy with the level of professionalism and uh, the commitment that uh, Tucson's crew base had. Uh, people were happy to work with him. Of course, he kept them well fed, which is great. Uh, but uh, he came away just really seeing Tucson's virtues. Um, he's talked about maybe some other things here, and I think that's a testament to our, our local crew and our interns. That's great. That's our you had a lot of success on the festival circuit. Now you're really active on social. Now, you know, through social, you can reach your fans directly. What's your sense of where festivals are going and where social is heading? That's kind of a tough question to answer because I've done a lot of thinking on that um, myself. I think festivals will always be around and they will always be relevant, like, you know, Sundance. Um, but I, I did do a internship with Sundance over the last year, and I think, you know, the general consensus was each year the attendance is kind of like stepping down a little bit by little bit each year. So, uh, and I think what that is is just uh, accessibility. Like for independent filmmakers nowadays, um, online is so much more accessible. If you have something that works and that has legs and the market wants to see it, you don't really have to promote it. Um, out, there's a number of films online that are prime examples for this. One being Algorithm, it's like, he dropped the film, didn't spend a dime promoting it. 10 million views later, you know, Walmart wants to put it on their shelves. So I think um, the old way, which was, you know, you submit your film to festivals and you wait four and six months to hear if you got in and you're spending all this money, uh, all this time. Um, I'm not saying that it didn't work or it was bad because it did work for a number of people, but I think we just have more options now. I think that's the best way to, to phrase it. We have more options now. But online, if you understand how to leverage micro content, it's like a beautiful thing. I think it's really important. If you can make a two and a half minute reel, that's about all you can ask somebody to watch these days.
but if you can make it an amazing two and a half reel that really showcases you, uh, whether you're on the bus at Sundance or you know, you're meeting somebody, you can just show it on your phone, whatever it is. Asking people to watch more than three minutes, believe it or not, is really an imposition to busy people. But if you can get an amazing two and a half minutes, that video calling card, I think, is, is a great step. That's really nice. Um, and so what about um, filmmakers who, yeah, I think uh, Gary's question went to continue. Filmmakers who haven't done a formal education, want to learn about film, what would you suggest? So filmmakers who haven't had a formal education and want to learn, first off, like now is the best time ever to, to try to pick up any kind of technical skill because there's so much information online for free. Um, the big thing, the big trade-off though is this, like going to film school, you're kind of, you're not just buying into like an education, you're also buying into a community. You know, there's something about being in the classroom with like 20 other people and you all have to make projects together and you all have to get to know each other. Um, a lot of what I do now, I still work with other alumni from the film school. So um, that's something that you're not quite getting by not going to film school. Can you make that up in other ways? Yes, you can, but you have to be more persistent. You know, like if you're trying to educate yourself, I think one of the best things you can do is get a job somewhere around film, like work at a camera shop, work at you know a rental house, somewhere where you can at least tap into the community by proxy. Um, because then you're gonna learn and hear about things that you wouldn't have even known to look up. Um, so I think if I were doing it over and I never went to film school, that's what I would've done. I would've got a job somewhere in a camera house or a rental shop or something near film so that I could you know, get educated at work, and then also self-educate at home, watching YouTube or you know, buying courses and whatnot. So I think that's kind of, you know. Yeah. Uh, just interestingly, uh, it made me think back when I first started on Happy Days, uh, when I was uh, 22 or 23, uh, I, the only other person on the, on the entire show who, who'd been to film school was Ron Howard, and he dropped out of USC to do Happy Days. <laughs> <laughs> So, so you know, and I think, that, and I think that I think the percentage today is probably swung, uh, maybe 50-50. But uh, being in film school is, is no guarantee. Uh, it only gives you uh, the tools to learn to build a career. I just want to add one thing to that, just a plug for IFA. I mean, that's a great way to really meet people. We have uh, our big networking meeting is in December, December sixth, and you get a. Uh, about a minute to do your little log line for whatever you're doing and talk about your project, who you need. We, we have crewed up whole films just in one meeting, you know, all, just about everybody you need will be there and you can say what you need and just networking at an IFA meeting I think is a great way to go. Great. Um, so one, uh, the city decided to make some changes and we were put under Visit Tucson, which is the tourism office. Um, my own personal opinion is it's much better for us under Visit Tucson because Visit Tucson is about marketing the regions to visitors, and that's what we do. Uh, when we were part of the city, it was a little bit more stringent. Um, being able to market was just not something the city was doing and was used to doing. So uh, it's a more natural fit for us under uh, Visit Tucson. Also, because Visit Tucson is about getting heads and beds, as they call it, so that's getting people to stay at their hotels, which ups the bed tax, um, we're a part of that as well. The more that uh, we bring in filmmakers, the more bed, heads and beds, I always get that wrong, the more heads and beds we have. So um, that's a big partnership with Visit Tucson. When filmmakers come and they found locations, they found their crew, we have a dedicated salesperson in our office who handles uh, hotels and lodging and resorts for incoming film productions. So she puts bids out to all the hotels, lets them know what they're looking for, if they need special security, parking, whatever it is, a production office space at the hotel. She gets all that down, puts out bids to all the hotels, resorts, and they come back with amazing offers and the filmmakers can pick based on price or what have you, which place they want to stay at. So that's a real advantage for us being under Visit Tucson because we have that connection with the hotels and resorts automatically. 